So can somebody actually sell their soul to the devil? Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all doing awesome today. So in this video, I want to look at the question. Can somebody actually sell their soul to the devil? Now, just some background before we jump in. Um, I have a podcast called the Tattooed Preacher Podcast. Links in the description below. And a few months ago, I did an episode. It's my most downloaded episode on this subject. Can somebody sell their soul to the devil? I called it the Faustian bargain. Go check it out. But right at that same time, I found this interview, this clip from this interview that Andrew Tate gave, where he was talking about this subject of selling their soul and how he was offered that chance to sell a soul, but he ultimately turned it down. Now that video that I reacted to on Instagram, it went viral. It's got well over 2 million views. And looking at all the comments, there's two, there was two main comments that came in on that video. The first comment was a lot of people doubt the fact that he turned down the offer of selling his soul and that he actually did, right? But that's a different subject for a different day. But the second comment that literally came hundreds of times on that video is that people said they, that it's impossible to sell your soul. You don't own your soul. God does. Therefore, you can't actually sell your soul. And so I kept seeing this comment. And so what I want to do in this video is address this subject again, because I think people are mixing up terms here. Maybe it's a bit of semantics because clearly, yes, we don't own our souls in a sense like God does. But that doesn't mean that you can't give right, give access to the enemy to come in and take control over you. And so that's what I want to do in this video. I want to I want to break this down so people actually understand what is being communicated when someone talks about selling their soul, like what's actually taking place there. Because if you just simply just dismiss it, oh it's just nothing. It's it's an impossibility. It doesn't mean anything. It's just for attention. It's just for show. Whatever the case may be, you leave yourself open to be deceived here. And so this is why I want to just quickly address this subject again. So when someone says that they sell their soul, what's actually going on here? When you study this subject, I mean, you just type this idea in Google and you're going to get so many different examples of people, celebrities, musicians, athletes, business people, People that have influence, fame, fortune, money. You're going to see literally over and over again this idea that they sold their soul to the devil to reach the pinnacle of where they're at. I mean, it's, it's, it's everywhere. And so some famous examples, right? Bob Dylan, famous musician, in a live interview, fully admitted, yeah, I gave myself over to, quote, the commander in chief because the interviewer asked him a question. He asked him, he's like, why do you keep going on? Like, why do you keep making music and doing what you're doing? And Bob Dylan goes, well, because I made a deal. I have to hold up my end of the bargain. Go out here doing these songs, you know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a duck bargain with it, you know, all time gone. I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? And <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and then, uh, and then in the world we can't see. And so he sacrificed his will, he sacrificed his free will 
and made a deal. So he's got to cons- he can't just retire, he can't just get out of the game because he had to hold up his end of the bargain. That's Bob Dylan, another famous musician, comedian. Uh, her name is Melissa Ford. She says this, and I quote, If your main goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to get there, like sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil, like you're going to end up on a one-way street going nowhere, like that is just the truth. I've seen so many people like forsake their moral code and their value system just for a little bit of fame. It is not worth it in the end. End quote. That's Melissa Ford. Those are two examples of, 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 of so many examples of people who sold their soul for fame, power, influence, fortune. Now, what are they doing when they do this? As Melissa pointed out, If you make a blood covenant with the devil where a contract is written and you sign your name in blood, you give yourself over, you give up legal right in a sense to yourself. And so now you've given the the devil permission and authority in your life to have free reign. He promises you money, fame, fortune, But then now he owns you. That's the deal. So you say, people say, well, you can't, you can't actually sell your soul. You don't own it to give. No, but you can make a covenant. And so a lot of people think, well, this transaction is kind of like the unforgivable sin. Well, if someone does this, then what are they now uh, ineligible from ever getting saved in the future? God can't reach you anymore. No, that's not what we're saying here. Jesus' blood and what Jesus did on the cross covers all, trumps all. He's over every power, authority, ruler, dominion, the devil himself. Yes, that's not what we're saying here. But there are people who give legal access to the enemy and then they therefore become controlled. This is the deal. They open themselves up. You see a lot of celebrities athletes, actors, where they talk about spirits inhabiting them, where these spirits take over and that's how they're able to perform better, sing better, act better, you know, play better. When you sign your name on the dotted line with blood, see that that, that means something. When you look through history, all the way back thousands of years and these ancient ceremonies and rituals, why do they all consist of blood. Look at the Christian worldview, the blood of Jesus. Why is there always this mention of blood? Because in the supernatural realm, in the spirit realm, blood is significant. It's seen as the life force of a person. And when blood is sacrificed, when when blood is used in specific rituals and ceremonies where a covenant is made and it's ratified by blood, stamped with blood in the supernatural realm, that's a powerful act. In the natural world, we don't really understand that part of it. We don't really get that. We think of blood, we think, oh, oh, that's gross, and we don't really, we can't, we can't connect with it. But in the unseen realm, in the supernatural realm, and when you start looking into the occultic, satanic, practices that are out there talking about blood. It's massively integrated in that system in that world. That's why blood is used. And so when these people make a covenant, a blood covenant with the devil, it gives them legal, it gives the devil, it gives his minions legal access to that person now. See, a demon can't just, or an unclean spirit can't just possess a person. They can't just come in there. They have to have permission. There has to be access there. This is why they look for access points. And when someone makes a deal fully open and aware saying, you know what? I want money. I want fame. I want fortune. I want power. Whatever the case may be, I'm going to willingly give over myself. I'm going to sign it in blood. That's it's You are inviting you are inviting them into your life. 
to the point where you don't have control anymore. They run you. You can't just walk away. This is why when you go down this conspiracy theory trail, a lot of these people who quote unquote try to get out while well, they end up dead. They end up becoming unalive. Why? Because when you go in, you can't just leave. But the point is this. Yes, you don't own your soul in the sense of the way God owns your soul, but you can give your allegiance, your worship, you can give your life over to the enemy, to where he has legal access over you now. That can happen. And yes, Jesus can come and that person can still be saved and set free and delivered and ransomed and you know reconciled with God. 100% that can still happen. But oftentimes there's a massive block in the middle of there. When you give that the enemy legal access, stuff has to be broken. Stuff has to be repented over. I mean, it's it's not just as simple as, you know, oh, now I, I worshiped the enemy and I've given myself over to the enemy and then just one little decision and one little act. And that, it's way deeper than that. There's control. There's influence. When you, the darker you get, the 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 further you go down that road, the more of yourself you give over, it becomes harder and harder to get back. Not impossible, but harder and harder. And so this is what, why people like they, they need to understand this is a real thing. We don't play with this stuff. And if you're, cele you know, celebrities and athletes and musicians and man, a lot of times they just get caught up in the glitz and the glamour. They don't really fully get what's happening. They don't fully understand the unseen realm. And then they get sucked in and then they can never get out. It's real. And so, yeah, if you're watching this and you think that, you know, you can't sell your soul. Okay. God owns your soul. Yes. But you can make a covenant and you can give yourself over to another entity and give them access. That can happen. That's what happens. So you can sell your soul. You can give yourself over your, your, your right to freedom and you bind yourself in the spirit to the enemy until they own you. That can happen. And only Jesus can come and then break that. But if Jesus doesn't come and break that, you're done. You're owned. That's what's real. So that's all I wanted to say on that subject. Um, don't sell your soul. Don't do it. Not worth it. Feel free to leave any comments, questions down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you agree with, disagree with. And thanks so much for watching. Have an awesome rest of your day or evening, and we'll see you in the next video. Much love. God bless.